Hi James, this is Jason. Uh, we're friends of Comic Con and Film Threat. Uh, my boss at Film Threat, Chris Gore, interviewed you back in the day for G4 TV Attack of the Show. Okay. Yeah. All right, I'll take your word for that. <laughs> All right, good. Yeah. Uh, and I know you go to some of these conventions. Do you have any uh, memorable... I tend not to. I tend not to do the cons. Yeah. I've done it a couple times, you know, to, to, to give people glimpses of what's upcoming. Like we, when we were trying to get Avatar established as an idea, as a, as a story, uh, because, you know, as, as the head of marketing at Fox said at the time, it's just a word. It doesn't mean anything to people. And we're like, let's make it mean something, right? So we went to uh, Comic-Con, I think, in San Diego. We, sh we showed them 14 minutes of the movie in 3D, you know, and that got people talking. So, yeah, I think there's a, there's a place for me at the cons, but I don't go as a fan because I wind up not learning nearly as much as I'm spraying out to everyone. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just, it doesn't inspire me. Uh, I'd rather read a good book or see a good, see a good film, you know. Yeah. Do you have a message for your fans at Comic Con? Well, look, I think it's, look, I mean, fans are true believers, right? And, and they're, they're often true believers in an entirely different thing. That's fine. But the thing about science fiction, when you're creating a persistent world that exists over time across a story arc that's multiple films long, you know, whatever that is, Star Trek, Star Wars, whatever it is, and hopefully Avatar, if we make the grade over time, you know, being a fan is so critical. And I always keep in mind when I'm, when I'm cutting a scene or whatever, it's like, oh, people that really remember the first film or have seen the comic or have, you know, we don't have the novelizations out yet, but we will. But people that have gone deep on the world will especially relate to this. But if you haven't and you're a casual viewer, you'll still understand what's going on. And that's a dynamic equipoise that's hard to hit, right? Because you can get a little bit too kind of high on your own supply in world building and expect people to keep up that it starts to feel like they're studying for a final, you know, as opposed to just going with the story. It's a fine line. I think we hit it on Avatar 2. I spent a fair bit of time in the first act, in the first 10 minutes, kind of not so much retelling what had happened, but reminding you who these people were and introducing the new people. You know, you've got to touch that base as you go by. Then after that, all bets are off. We just go wherever we want to go. Thank you very much, James. Okay.